भाग्यपूर्ण कमेंट है uh you know today is my is one of the most special shows I've done yet i have i am so excited to introduce you to my aunt julie aka madge she's my aunt julie and she had such foundational role and who you see me are today she, in fact she used to drive hours to come see me every day at the hospital when I'm a stroke and i am totally grateful for her. i'm just deeply grateful i'm going to try not to cry because i i love her so much and I, and i think i'm just overwhelmed with emotions this morning so let's bring her online right now and i'm bring her on this minute to live No 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 We belong together Well there she is Good morning Angela Good morning Erin Thank you so much for being here Oh you're welcome it's my pleasure You know when I talk about you I I when I think about everything you did for me when I am a stroke I get I get emotional when I do so I'm trying I do want to cry because I love you so much I love what you've done and it's been years coming <laughs> but I think that really can kick off the show you and I discussed briefly we would like to dedicate this chart to her cousin Beb Mella right is that right yeah, that's right and she passed away christmas day and there's one thing and i will say as being as a kid classy she was the most classy lady she was the first one at the party setting up and lots on the leaf Porsche dishes and just classy. So we dedicate the show to her, don't we? Yes, we do. Thank you, Aaron. So anyway, it's pretty great to see you here. It's it's an honor to have you here. And I I really want to get right into it cuz I want everybody to know that unless oh, we get a comment of Freddy as soon as someone named oh someone named Scott White is saying good morning i i think Scott White is in ohio i think mm -hmm. i'm not right but anyway people you were there so much for how long did you drive from my house to visit me not spell well i think i came to redwood city once and that was uh cuz i didn't know where i was going and it it always seems longer it was probably about an hour and a half to get there <clears throat> and uh same to go home and when you went to uh Vallejo for your physical therapy i uh was there a lot and that almost was almost every day if i remember right i was there almost every day yeah i mean because i could be and yeah, so and i that, went to yeah. be with you and support you and that was about an hour each way yeah in fact they you were there so much they thought you're my mom when they discharged me and they thought you were my mom so but yeah. the one so that was funny yes. but i wanted to take this time to let you kind of tell people about my stroke what you from your point of view from your perspective because i didn't know what i mean never i never asked you so if you would tell people what you experienced my stroke well when i came to see you it was hard to see you in that state because you couldn't do anything for yourself and so i was there to help and support you and um a lot of times i would find out when your therapy was going to be and i'd come after that then i started coming to watch your therapy and i would help feed you if you needed assistance and sit with you and 
listen to your crazy jokes if I could understand them. Mm. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it was just it was therapy for me too, Aaron, to be with you. And that's the kind of person I am. I just want to be there helping and supportive. And so, um, well, like I said, Ron, didn't Uncle Ron pass away just he he passed in 2008 so he was already gone right but you know it was such it was like you know i wanted to give shelter to my grand too mm -hmm. and you know not that the module that the kids are shutting him too because i have extremely fond memories of mm -hmm. raceway mm -hmm. really i have very big memories of that yeah. but when you i'm curious <laughs> Because people don't know, I was absolutely totally mute when I first had my stroke. I couldn't mm -hmm. say a word. And, it, you know, for me to speak like I do now is a miracle. Yes. Because you, you were, the only thing I will say, you were one of the few people that could understand me. Either you say you could, you were one of the few that could. Yeah. I, I still have trouble with some of the words you say, but it's, it is a miracle how you've come through this and how you can uh, speak as well as you do. And uh, yeah, I figured it out and I could understand you. Um, I think probably the most fondest, I mean, <laughs> you, you were like a ray of sunshine. <laughs> when I, I came in the hospital, when I was lying in the hospital, I look forward to you being there because I mean, support after stroke is so critical. Yeah. There are so many strokes about it, Aunt Joy. I lay alone in bed for yeah. a day, for months after yeah. stroke. But I was one of those fortunate people that had an aunt like you that literally came every day. My, I, I, I saw you every day. Pretty, I felt like it, and like I said earlier. I saw you so much <laughs> that the hospital thought you were my mother. Yeah. <laughs> so you to drive. Now, I'm curious. Yeah, you mean to mention it was hard to see me in the state I was in. Well, Could yeah, you, because, you because you were you were helpless. Um, you couldn't do anything. You couldn't speak in the beginning, very tough to understand what you were trying to say. And uh, I, all of us would just encourage you to, you know, maybe tell you what you were trying to say and have you say it correctly. Um, it just takes work. And um, yeah, it was hard to see you being helpless. And because you were so vibrant before that it was hard to see you just laying there. You couldn't do anything on your own. You couldn't even sometimes get a fork to your mouth. And so um, that was real hard to see. I, I've never experienced anybody that I know personally that's had an aneurysm and then a stroke. And so it really hit home for me on how that affects people such as you. Yeah, you know, it was, it was it was hard to be able to communicate. That was the hardest part of it. In the beginning, not being able to speak and be mute. Mm -hmm. And like you, well, you knew me before. I was a very outdoors person. And yes. I was a fish, a fish, a dove. I did a lot of kinds of things. You're right. It was mm -hmm. very hard for me. I can remember waking up at the hospital. It's feeling so hopeless and lost. But there are two people that I can remember giving me the most of number one Mercer Rebecca. Always there from never and still still by my side. Yes. Number two, would you you came up? I just look forward to seeing you. It made me feel like I'm, I had hope. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I wanted to make sure you knew there was hope. And um, yeah, of course, Rebecca and Ryan were there all the time too. And a lot of times I would work my visits so that I was there after them or before, or if they weren't going that day, then 
I knew I, you know, I didn't want to infringe. I loved seeing them. I loved them. But I wanted to make sure you had your family time too. Yeah, I I think probably, uh, I think one of the hardest things I experienced or one of the most blessings I had was family, Tommy. And you were part of that family and that time I need to, I remember I, I'd ask her back, I can remember asking her back, where's my Aunt Julie? <laughs> when did she come to get there? <laughs> and I just look forward to it. But I think when you first saw me walk in, when you walked in, when you first saw me describe that moment, do you remember that? I thought you remember. I don't remember that exact moment, but I I knew that it wasn't going to be good because I knew what state you were in when you were at uh, Redwood City and after you had your stroke. So I was kind of expecting what I saw, but it was still very hard to see you um, almost frail because yeah. you... Um, you were like a baby again, you yeah. know. So, um, yeah, it was it was hard to. to yeah, see that. I think probably that that time when you, I think that's really like you just you just said me, but the first time I think someone said on on the head, I was like a baby. I was like just helpless, laying yeah. there and helpless. Yeah, you were. Yeah, and then when you um, did start talking, um, I remember I had, and you've done this, and I'm proud of you, I had to tell you, Aaron, slow down. Mm -hmm. Slow your talking down. You're running out of air before you get your sentence out because you keep talking. <laughs> and so I'm glad that that's made a big difference in me understanding what you're saying. Yeah, you know, there was one thing at night that you and I joke about and talk about, even this day, because I think every stroke survivor goes through it pretty much. Mm -hmm. I told you one day something, and that really has become foundational to who I am today, really, really was, your response. <laughs> I told you I felt stupid. Yeah. And my God, you got you got pissed. Mm -hmm. You get yeah, I could tell that face all got parked <laughs> out. You were like, and did, what did I tell you? I said, Angie, that feels stupid. Yeah. Well, when you, you had said that many times, and it was usually if you couldn't get your leg to move right, or you couldn't. This was at a time when you were eating and something happened where it was your hands wasn't working well and I said Aaron you are not stupid and if you say that again I'm not coming back and you took me serious <laughs> and you never said you were stupid again because it wasn't your fault you weren't stupid you were relearning and so yeah I did tell you that and it worked I'm glad that you listened to me well, you were you were kind of like a rock to me, and have you say you were not going to come back? This, I mean, it <laughs> shut me right up. I'll tell you what, because I can remember looking forward to seeing each and every day. I, I have such a remembrance of you coming there, me laying in bed waiting for you. I'd mm -hmm. wait for you. You didn't know it. Uh, no. but I would literally wait for you to uh -huh. get there. And, then, and that was it did the stuff that the family support began with you yes. but then I want to acknowledge all the family that put together a fundraiser spaghetti feed I've been wanting to thank them for years yeah. and I'm so glad we're here right now why I can say oh the airways thank mm -hmm. you for the spaghetti feed I remember it's great yeah. yeah it was the fundraiser for you and that was a wonderful day. We yeah. had a lot of fun and and draw raffles and yeah, it was um, it was really good. 
So we Tell people to do- a little bit about what it was or what you did for those ones that may want to do a fundraiser like that for their own family members. Well, we had a venue that was willing to give us the place for the purpose of raising money for you um, because you weren't able to work. Rebecca wasn't able to work because she was, once you got home, I think you were home at this point, and um, because she was caring for you. And so you actually had no income coming in. So Pengrove Social Firemen offered their hall free of charge for you to hold, for us to hold a a fundraiser for you. And so, Bev Meller's husband, Roland, he uh, did the cooking of spaghetti and had salad. And um, it, I don't, there was no charge for it. The only thing we charged for was if you wanted to, I don't think there was a charge. We charged for um, uh, raffle tickets. And then we did ads in a book. Uh, I still have that book somewhere. of. Um, Jeez. I think so. I'll have to look. And it was a book of um, advertisers that paid um, whatever we wanted for either a a small ad, a half page, a full page. And so that's how we raised the money for you. And um, I think it was around $12,000, $13,000 that we raised. And it felt good to be able to do that. And it was a good success. And I don't know, we just kind of dove into it. And Bev's daughter, Cindy Watterson and Turlock, she was instrumental in getting a lot of this going. And so, yeah, we had the fundraiser and it was a lot of fun. And people got to see you for the first time. And of course you were in your wheelchair. And, uh, but they knew how you were affected by this. So it was you know, good. I, you know, I can still see my mom mm-hmm. st- st- standing behind the table, taking, selling her their raffle tickets. Yeah. And, you know, and I remember Joel and Rhonda and what Troy had done, but mainly Joel and Rhonda were, Joel, I think Joel said most of, sold most of the advertising, didn't he? Pretty much. Yeah, Joel's a character. <laughs> yeah, and he's very helpful on stuff. He's uh, he's great. He's the best son-in-law I could have ever picked out. And he's a wonderful man. Yeah, I mean, I've been so fortunate to have a family sports system that really makes all the difference. If you out there are wondering what you could do, just be there for the search survivor. Just be there. My and Julie used to drive two hours every day to and from to come see me. I'm telling you, stroke survivors, we need the support. The just, I think it's, we didn't talk a lot because I did talk, yeah. but just holding my hand, holding, making me feel that your presence, it was just made all the difference in the world. Yeah, and I would tell you what was going on you know, with me. And so you um, got a little feel of, you know, what was going on on the outside. Um, There was something I was going to say about, oh, shoot, I lost it. (laughs) Oh, I I know. (laughs) I was going to say I was retired. I, my husband had passed. I don't have grandchildren. I had no reason to not venture out each day that I was able to. Um, And I probably didn't come every day, but I came most days. And so I didn't have anything to stop me. One thing that's also very fortunate for us is we all are local. We all live here in town. Um, My furthest cousin lives two hours away in Sacramento. And the rest of us are in Sonoma County, and that makes a huge difference when you're not working and you're able to do it, you know. Um, All of it kind of came together at that time here, and it was perfect for me to be able to come over and watch you go through the stuff. Then I got to where I um, 
was there for your physical therapy and I would watch you in physical therapy and that was very rewarding to see what you were able to do. And uh, yeah, so if I got there and you hadn't gone to physical therapy, I would trot along and sit and watch. I'll tell you, that was probably, I can think back and I can remember pretty much all of it, but the therapy has a, it has a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. It helps you recover, no doubt. Helps you somewhat regain your abilities. Mm -hmm. But it also shows you how messed up you are. Mm -hmm. I can remember, Julie, going through my day, going, gosh, man, to this day I'm frustrated, but I'm, I've come to a piece of myself the way mm -hmm. I'm. But it, it, it poses a like the double edged sword, it gets better, it makes you feel like it makes you realize how much you are. Yeah. But I'm curious, what is, I mean, it felt like you have a heart of giving. And I, I just, I just, I'm overwhelmed. I get cried this day because I'm so grateful for what you did. I mean, just so grateful. Mm -hmm. Not just how, but the spaghetti feed, Rhonda, Joel, everybody, Cindy, everybody got bad. Like, you know, again, I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> I can see Bev just working his tail off. I mean, she worked her butt off and, and rolling. Mine just su support is so important mm -hmm. to what we're doing. <clears throat> and the stir survivor needs a spark. But, you know, I wanted to say one thing, is that I love you, and I think I appreciate everything you did for me, and I always will till the day I die. Well, it's good. It's nice to hear that, Aaron. I know you appreciated it. I never doubted that. And I, I think the stroke victim's attitude has a huge amount to do with it. You know, you give them uh, support and hope and something to look forward to beyond a life where you're maybe incapacitated in some way. And if you don't have that in yourself, I think you tend to give up. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to do therapy. You don't care. But you give them that that hope that, in fact, I read something on on your page this morning, somebody said uh, that they felt that their life began when they had their stroke, and that's what you have expressed. And so um, I praise you for the work you do. I think you were put on this earth to help people, and you having a stroke, you've been able to do that and be positive. And I know from all over the world, they, they have seen you. And your work is amazing. Yeah, you know, you, it's you know, when, yeah, you and I discuss. And I tell, I tell people what I tell you. God, my brain injuries and stroke were God's tools. And I told you this morning before we started the show. Sometimes when your life feels like it's falling apart, it's really falling into place. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where my stroke has led me. My stroke has led me to my destiny. My destiny was to do what I'm doing right now. Andrew, I'm helping thousands of people around the world deal with a stroke. Yes, yeah. And I, I could be one or two amazing people. Two survivors are amazing people, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. Uh, it, but it's, it's been um, quite a journey. I mean, I, could, I would not take the, I would not ch change it for anything. Would I take away my stroke, my aneurysm, if I could? No. Because it brought me here where I'm at right now with you right now. Oh my gosh. I mean, we're sitting there sharing energy and we're dedicating the show to Bev. And the timing is just what timing is. It may not be in our time, but it's God's timing. Mm -hmm. That's it's right. Working. That's right. And the fact that you look at it like this, how many people would say, I wouldn't change anything, you know? 
because you have done this for people that I think that was your purpose. Well, I want to go back a little bit and talk to Uncle Ron for a minute. Uncle mm -hmm. Ron, your husband, mm -hmm. died of cancer. Yes. But you also were his character. And I remember seeing him go through some <coughs> yeah. really hard times. Yeah, he had cancer. and It was oral cancer in his jaw. And um, he was pretty self-sufficient. For two and a half years, he was in remission. He had a feeding tube in his stomach. He fed himself with a syringe and the canned foods. And I was still working at that time. And so he took care of himself. But the last few months when he got worse, um, the cancer had come back. And after it was diagnosed, he only lasted about a month. But uh, during those last couple of months, I was more of his caregiver, um, State Farm, with their uh, generous policy, I was able to use a lot of my sick time, and they were so generous with that, to care for a, him, a family member. And so I didn't lose out on pay, and I was still able to be home and be his caregiver. And then at that point, I would do the feeding for him um, at the very end, he got um, pretty bad to where he was having accidents and I had to clean him up. And so I think that was a little, I want to say, degrading for him. But at the same time, we had been together almost 40 years and it was just something I needed to do. And uh, I took care of him. But um, well, it kind of. It kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say prepared you, but it kind of have you prepared you to deal with me, I hate to say it, because there are many times I I, I would see your heart, because again, your heart, we were there once, you were there by my own mother, no doubt. <laughs> and then to see there was a heart that you had, a heart of love, a heart of it, I cannot describe it. So I can only imagine how fortunate my uncle Ron was to have you doing that for him. It yeah. was real special. But I'm curious, what really did did you did you think it was going to make it? Were you there? I heard, I again heard this. When I first had my brain injury or stroke, they wheeled me off into a different room and told everybody to say goodbye. Were you there? No, I no, I wasn't there at, at the hospital in Santa Rosa. I wasn't. Um, I don't know if I heard about it. I'm not sure what time it was, I, I, but I wasn't here. I came to see you in Redwood City had not to the hospital that was 10 minutes away. <laughs> but um, I did hear that, that they said that you should not have lived through that. Yeah, I remember I was told that. Again, I went to three hospitals. I, I, I don't remember Vallejo. That's all I remember. I don't remember. I remember flying from, well, I don't, I just don't remember it all. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't, you know, and I think uh, sometimes we're meant to forget some of those things that happen. Um, but yeah, I remember that when they said, when the family told me that they, I think it was Becca that said they had said that you shouldn't have even lived. And so you're a miracle. You know, as far as I'm concerned, you're a miracle and the work you do is miraculous. Yeah, but you don't, again, it goes back to that thing I was talking about earlier. See, to me, what I experience now is my stroke and my brain aneurysm were the tools God chose to use to make me, to bring me to a today. And, the, and right now, as you know, I am 
blessed and help thousands and thousands of people around the world help navigate stroke in fact so they knew you don't know about yeah. that what we're going to be doing stroke tv is going to be doing a project new project mm-hmm. called bridging the gap mm-hmm. from from hospital to home because what happens what happens out there Julie, is basically you spend all your structured time in the hospital and then they kick you out. And you let your fan member doesn't know what to do with you. You you so we're gonna put a video series to go. I'm gonna be working with an organization so stroke awareness organ. Amazing people doing amazing things. And we're gonna be putting together a video series for the people like Rebecca or you or anybody that that will be, they can watch it and watch actual stroke survivors tell how the end family members, and you'll probably be in it if I'm, if I can uh, talk into it because it's people need that navigation. There is no navigation. Right. To what right. they're, what they're doing. You know, I, I got very fortunate and you know, from the family, the fundraiser, the spaghetti feeds, the donut rides. I used to get down to United States, get down <laughs> all the time. And I look forward to it, to that, to this, to, to, to look back and then just what a real special time. Because for what a time out for people that don't know, mm-hmm. when Julie used to come pick me up, we take me to the donut shop, we'd have coffee. Donuts and feed the dogs at the mm-hmm. at Hearth Park, a local lake here. But, we need we need to do that again, Aaron. Yeah, we do. I I really do because I'm, yeah, missing, I'm when missing. you have time. You well, let me what know. this COVID this COVID has put us in well, such yeah. a dilemma. It really is separated our family. Yeah. I really don't like it, but it's no. always gonna be. Yeah, in the spring. It. It'll be over someday. It'll be yeah. over someday. Yeah, but I'm curious. Uh, do you have any any memory of you said you were there my therapy, and I don't remember. I don't remember my therapy that much. But I can barely hold up my head. I was like a baby. Mm-hmm. I would, I would be a little marble, and, but <laughs> the therapy is pretty hard. If I remember right, they supposed to be pretty hard. Yeah, um, when I was uh, going in and watching your therapy, you were further into it. You were more um, able to do some stuff. So it wasn't in the very beginning. It was probably more closer to when you were going home. And but I would make sure not to stay away during that time if you hadn't had it yet, because I was interested in finding out what you could do, what they were doing to help you. And um, it just uh, I thought, why not? Why wait to come? I'll just watch and and go back to the room with you. <laughs> you know, I'm just so I'm so saying I'm fine. I'm, I'm so grateful for you being there, Aunt Julie. I mean, so grateful. I cannot express to you. I'm going to start crying. I'm going to stop. But there was something that occurred during discharge. I want everybody to know that they weren't going to let me go. They were asking where my mom was. <laughs> and Guess who they thought my mom was? <laughs> it was you. You were there so much during my during my therapy, during my stay at the hospital that they weren't gonna let me go because my mom, my mom wasn't that they didn't. And my mom was there, but <laughs> my Julie wasn't there, and they yeah they they they. They were going to not let me go, but I appreciate being there yeah. because they weren't going to let me go. But they thought you're my mother. Yes, yeah. yeah. But I want to acknowledge too also what Joel and Rhonda did. And because Joel and Rhonda were there too, and I want to thank them right now 
publicly. And, you know, again, years coming, better late than never. But I want to thank all the family for everything they did for my family. And it really made a foundational difference of who I am today. Mm -hmm. I mean, what you guys did made me, gave me ability to become who I am today. And as you know, Rebecca, like foundational on that. She has done it all. Mm -hmm. She has done all up outside one bit. I am so like, I mean, she's been through hell and back. And the same with Ryan. And now Ryan has his own grandbaby, his own son. And, you know, life goes on. But here we are. It's been 11 years now that since I might, it, I'll never forget it. It was very yeah. traumatic. Yeah. But I'll never forget that time. But the one thing I'll never forget is you were always there, Angelie. And I greatly appreciate that. Thank you. And that was really something. But I think, what did, is there any takeaways or anything you noticed that you learned during that time of seeing the hospital? Uh, is there anything, any offer, any suggestion you can give maybe somebody else in that position? Um. No, nothing comes to mind uh, to to offer up as information, um, but maybe to uh, be positive. I have always, with Ron, with you, I've always tried to be positive. With Bev, you know, um, I like to build people up, tell them it's going to be okay. They're going to, you know, get through this. And... Um, not be a gloomy Gus, you know, you got to give somebody a reason to feel good. I, even for myself, I don't go into surgery scared or worried. I have confidence that I'm going to make it. If I don't, I won't know it. And so I just, I trust my doctors. And so I just, I don't worry about something that's not there. And so when I hear stuff, I always feel like they're going to be okay. They're going to get through it. And so try to be positive with the person that you're um, helping or, or sitting with and um, give them something to look forward to or to think about or tell them they're going to make it. And uh, shit, sometimes it works. <laughs> In your case, it did, you know. You're it, I can remember you were always positive. And I, you know, now I think back at that time, that actually was pretty significant because there were times I wanted to give up. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get, I could easily get spiral into depression. Mm -hmm. And I can remember always, you were always positive. Always giving, always loving. Never, like you said, that beat down. It was always, it was never, oh, poor, you know, you're such a victim. It was when I said I was stupid and you got pissed. And then I realized, you know, I'm not stupid. And I got, my Aunt Julie's here, she gave me such inspiration and help. So I would second that that advice mm -hmm. give the person if you're out there take care of your own stroke survivor focus on being positive focus on being uplifting for the person they're gonna make it they're gonna it's not always gonna be bad i mean we look at love years it's been 11 years and yes i'm not do, doing as well as maybe i would like to be but i sure as shit ain't sorry <laughs> i sure as shoot tuning and not like it used to be yeah. so i you know i'm thankful for that yeah i'm really thankful for that yeah but you know i don't know i can't help it on here Rhonda out there but i guess you know you weren't able to make it, but maybe she should watch it later. Mm. No, she said she was going to watch it. She's probably oh. on there. Maybe she doesn't know she can respond um, 
to your on your text? Well, I think family support is critical for the Church of Barbe because that initial support, that initial popping up under that very harsh circumstances, that right. that popping up that the sport gives mm -hmm. the Church of Barbe is irreplaceable, you'll never get a second chance to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for that support. And then we were able to get together now and then after, just so you know, um, I lost her brother, my dad. They did, they passed, how many years ago now? It was, it was uh, I think it was three years in uh, October. And November, they you your parents. That. It's been three years. I know your parents passed. Uh, I think it was like sixteen days apart. That was amazing. That's yeah, that they're together. That it Sorry. is. That's also when I want to bring up a new talk about Bev and dedicating the show to Bev. See, I alone naturally, well, I truly believe with all my heart that life. Is not what you see with your eyes. We are spiritual, our eternal spiritual. We'll see Beth again. I know. Oh, I exactly. know it with all my heart yeah. that we will see Beth again. That when I will see my mom and dad again. Yes. And, uh, there is no death. There is people live forever. Mm -hmm. And we're eternal beings. Uh, we're energy. Mm hmm. What you are is energy. That's mm -hmm. what I felt when I walked in, when I was in the room in the hospital. Yeah. You brought your energy to me. And the body is just the way we're, we're able to move around and express the energy. Yeah. But I am, I believe wholeheartedly that we will see Bev and the people, and mom and dad, your brother. Ron Garon, well, everybody has passed, we will say again. Yes, I believe that too. That's what gives us hope, I think, to uh, continue on and and look forward to the future. You know, this isn't all there is. And I also wanted to say, when you talk about family being so important about being supportive, maybe you don't talk to your family. Maybe you don't have any family left anymore. Then uh lean on somebody that is like family to you um i have my best friend is we call each other sisters because neither one of us had a sister we just had brothers and so um she is and bev was like a sister to me and so is virginia the the three of them i feel as close to as if they were blood relatives and so those people that you kind of adopt into your life to be that kind of relative um, helps. If that's what it means uh, to, to have the support from somebody who is like family. Uh, sometimes they say, there's a saying, I can't remember what it is that, um, Sometimes uh, chosen family is, is oh, better. Oh, yeah, I know. I can't remember it either. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't, even if it's not blood family and they are um, like family, then hopefully those people will be support to the person that needs it. Well, it's true. You don't, I really family because we're all connected spiritually, in my opinion. Well, every human being is connected, but there's a, there's one energy that I found the most powerful through all this is love energy, mm -hmm. and that love energy transcends relative, transcends friend. If you love someone, don't take it for granted. You and I, we lost some people who love it, and. Don't take those people for granted. Go on and say, I love you. Mm -hmm. Say, I, I, hi, whatever. But you could, like, I think it's, you could choose, you could choose your friends. 
yeah, yeah, I know. I can't think of it either. <laughs> but the main thing is love energy. Is if you love the person, yeah, definitely reach out to them and support them. Exactly. But you know, we're pretty much done with the show. I appreciate you being there. Thank you so much, Angela. Oh, Aaron, it's my pleasure. Thank you for asking me to be, yeah. to be on here. Um, it was painless. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. like I thought it would be, you know, yeah. where I'm at. But it was, uh, I love you. Well, I love you too, Angel. Thanks again for being here. Appreciate it. Okay, honey. Anytime. Bye. Okay. <laughs>